Hello everybody, welcome back to the shop. We're doing a cast iron weld repair today. Now I don't have a whole hell of a lot of experience with this, but I have enough I think I can do this successfully. I've got a simplex jack on the bench that I picked up at a flea market last year. And I probably could have got the price down a little bit more if I noticed it was cracked. But at any rate, I already started a little bit before I started the video, but I'll catch you up. So here's the crack over here. I already V'd it out with a grinder. But first thing to note is that I think it's safe to weld this. It was actually already welded and cracked when I when I got it. But this is not in a super critical location. It's not like, you know, right here where the where the main pivot is. It's not on the foot where it could break off and drop your load. So I think this is a fairly safe thing to do. Secondly, how I prepared it. At the end of the crack, I determined the end of the crack was right about there. I drilled a hole. That hole is a stress reliever. So, uh, without that hole, the end of the crack is just a point. And that's a stress razor, so it, that crack could continue. So I drilled that hole. It stops that crack. Secondly, you can see there was some previous weld here. I ground some of it down, and then I V'd it out. I didn't V it all the way through, of course, but I V'd it down almost all the way and the remainder a little bit of material in the in the crotch of the V I'm sure the weld will penetrate through just fine and will have more or less 100 percent penetration so that's the first uh, part of the preparation once we get this on the welding bench I'm gonna heat this up with a torch not just this area here but this whole part of the body get this whole thing nice and warm the reason for that is cast iron even though it's strong it's fairly brittle so you increase your chances of, of success by getting the whole thing hot that allows everything to expand you weld it then everything contracts evenly and there's a less chance of it cracking right after you weld it the other thing uh, I'm going to weld it with nickel rod nickel rod apparently has the same expansion, uh, thermal thermal expansion characteristics as cast iron does. Uh, plain steel, regular steel welding rod doesn't. I believe some people have had fairly good luck using 7018 stick electrodes or MIG welding to weld cast iron. But uh, I have the nickel rod so I'm going to use that. So like I said, we'll get this on the welding bench, heat it, warm it up with a torch. Not super hot, just just nice and nice and warm, maybe, I don't know, 200 degrees or something. We're going to weld it. Obviously just one pass is all I'm going to need. Just buzz it right over and I'll be done. Now as it's cooling, I'm going to do two things. First, I'm going to keep the torch on it lightly so it cools down even more slowly. Uh, if I had a, a welding blanket, I could wrap this up with the blanket and let it cool down even more slowly that would be like a fireproof insulating blanket or if this was just you know one piece of if there wasn't a whole bunch of other stuff in here with grease and oil on it I could throw this in a bucket of ashes or a bucket of sand or something like that and again that's an insulator it'll help it cool down more slowly the last thing as it's cooling I'm gonna hit it with this needle scaler I'm gonna peen the weld and apparently that helps ease out the stresses, so the, the stresses that are forming in there as it's cooling off, by peening it, it'll knock that stress out before that stress raises enough to create a crack or a fracture. And my air compressor is off and the pressure is a little bit low. I think that that'll be just perfect. It'll just give a nice, soft, gentle rat-a-tat tatting. If you don't have a needle scaler, uh, you could use a little ball-peen hammer or something. Before I ground this off, there was actually some hammer marks. So it looks like the guy that tried to repair this before did know what he was doing, but it just uh, was unsuccessful because it's kind of hit or miss with this stuff. I feel that there's a decent chance of success here because this isn't this piece of cast iron is it's been fairly clean its whole life. Of course, you know some oil and dirt and whatever, but it's not like an exhaust manifold where it's been exposed to a lot of carbon, a lot of heat cycles, a lot of intense heat. Uh, cold or it's not like a piece in a transmission that's been soaked in oil and absorbed all the oil 
Well, that's the other. Th that's the other thing with heating with a torch. It'll bring any oil out because cast iron is porous. It'll bring the oil out and burn it off. So let's bring this over to the welding bench and uh, get going. All right, we've got everything set up here on the welding bench. Now, the first thing I want to show you, I may have showed you before, but winter welding projects, you know, you're inside, you make smoke, it's bad to breathe. So I want to show you this nifty thing I made. At the dump a while ago, I found that uh, centrifugal, uh, rather a squirrel cage blower fan. I don't know what the hell it was off of. It's fairly large, maybe furnace blower, I, I have no idea. But I mounted it in the window, I, I lowered down the top portion of the window and put that piece of plywood in there. Mounted the fan to the plywood, got some 8 inch, you know, expandable like dryer ducting or something like that. And it's expandable and corrugated so you can kind of move it and position it where you want. And then I learned from my previous iteration and I put wire mesh on the outside so birds don't build a nest in there. and it does a hell of a job sucking up smoke even if you don't have it right under where you're welding it'll suck the smoke sideways it works works great here's the rod i'm using i'm not crazy about hobart but uh you know i've had i had this from a previous job it works okay it's called nomacast Get that torch on there. I think that came out pretty well. The weld is not absolutely perfect. Started out a little bit thin there, globbed up, and there's a low spot. And right about here, the weld got nice and even. But, you know, what can you do? I was going to go over a second time and, like, thicken this up a little bit and fill that in or whatever. Then I'm looking at it as it's cooling down, like, oh, there's some undercutting here from the previous weld. Maybe I should... You know, no, 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 it's fine. Don't fuck with it. I filled in the crack with weld. If this was plain steel, you know, if this was just any 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 other thing, just a piece of, piece of plain old my old steel I was weld and I could I could go crazy on this and it wouldn't matter. But this is good enough, leave well enough alone. 
don't want to pump too much heat into it. I don't see any cracks. It's uh, still, you can't hold it, but it's, you can touch it briefly, so it's more or less cool. And that's that, so I'd call that a success. We'll see how it holds up in the long run. Maybe that original weld held up initially, then cracked again, but did just about as best as I could. Came out well, and that's that. So, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope this helps out some of you out there trying to do some cast iron welding. It's, uh, it's a real black magic, it seems. Some people, you know, I've seen uh, forum threads and stuff, people just weld in a whole ton of different shit. You know, broken up uh, cast iron, hit and miss cylinders, inside and out in the water jacket and all sorts of stuff. And it comes out beautiful and they're real tight lipped on how they do it. I don't know why that doesn't benefit anybody. So here I am. I don't know much, but here I'm showing you what I do now. So thanks for watching, everybody. Hit the subscribe and like button and keep up to date with all the other projects I got going on here. And thanks for watching. And as always, come on back for more.